Okay, so in this video, we're going to be continuing on with our series on the Go programming language, and we're going to be co covering values in this video. So we're gonna start off very similarly to the way that we started off in the Hello World. We're going to say package main, we're going to import our library format, and one thing that I'm going to also import into this program is another library. So one way we can import another library is we can have another import statement on another line, and we can import, in this case, this library that we want to import, which is called time. So this is generally not the convention one uses when one imports multiple uh, libraries into Go. Basically what one does is says import, open, parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then within these parentheses, we put in the modules that we want, which are just delimited by spaces, no commas. So I'm just going to get rid of these two explicit import statements, remove them here, and then we're just going to put anything that we import into this, uh, into these parentheses. So I just want to point something out. If we go ahead and write this, and if we go ahead and try to give this a run, I'm just going to clear the screen first. If we go ahead and try to run this particular program, let's go ahead and see what happens. So I'm going to just say go run values.go. This will run the program that we have here. So we see that we get two errors. So the first error is that imported and not used format, imported and not used time. So basically what this is telling us is that we're importing both of these libraries and we're not making use of them in the program that we're running. So this is kind of a nice thing because it makes sure that anything that you import, you make use of. Now in Python, you can definitely import things and you can just have them there without actually explicitly making use of them. You might, if you use an IDE like PyCharm or something like that, you might see that the editor highlights them in red or underlines them or tells you that something's not being used, but it doesn't throw any error. It might just throw a warning at you. So in Go, just to be aware, it's going to let you know that if you're importing something or if you're defining a variable, which we'll get to in the next video, and you're not using it, then that's going to throw an actual error. So just be aware of that. So let's go ahead and create our main function loop or our main function, um, or just a main function. So inside of this main function, we'll go ahead and print out something that should look familiar. We'll say format.println, and then we'll say hello world, which should be exactly the same as what we had in the hello world program. And then just to make sure that we don't get the error that says that we're not making use of time, let's go ahead and make use of that. So we'll say format.println, and then we'll say the time is, and then we'll say a comma, and then we'll say time.now. So again, just to be clear on what's going on here, time is a library that's provided from Go. We're making use of that library. Specifically, we're making use of the function now from the library time, which is accessed through this dot operator. So we're making use of this function from this time. And then the convention is always to uppercase the first letter of any function from a internal Go library. So that's why this uppercase N is there. So we're making use of that now function, and this just returns the current time in terms of a uh, time date stamp. So we're gonna see the time is, and then we're going to follow that with the current time date stamp for today. So let's go ahead and now run this since we won't get any errors from not making use of either of those two libraries, and then we'll go ahead and run this file. So we see hello world, which is the first line, and then the time is, and then concatenated to that, we see a current time stamp with the date, and then also the time and the time zone. So we don't get output, I'm just going to comment this one out. I'm going to leave this one so we don't continually get an error for not printing or making use of the time function. So I'm just going to leave that at the bottom. So let's go ahead and print out some other things. So one thing we can also do is we can evaluate mathematical expressions within the print line. So we can print out the evaluated expressions of certain things. So for instance, we can say format.println1 plus 1. We do the same thing for subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus. So we'll replace each of those with their appropriate operator. So subtraction is given by the minus sign, multiplication by the asterisk, division by the slash, and then modulus by the percent sign. So these should look somewhat familiar to you, especially if you're coming from Python or just about any other programming language is going to use these same conventions for this, this type of operations. So we should see one plus one evaluated to, true, to two, zero, one, one, and then zero. So if we go ahead and write this and give it a run, we should see two, zero, one, one, and then zero, and then the timestamp at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and comment these out. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the block comment, which again is slash asterisk, followed by an asterisk slash to end the comment block. 
So similar to what we did down here, we can do something that's going to kind of combine the idea of evaluating an expression, printing that out, and then just printing out the a, a string that precedes it. So we can say format.println, we can say one plus one is equal to, and then a comma, and then one plus one. So this is actually going to evaluate the one plus one expression, and then before that is going to precede it with a string, and then actually give a space here. So this, this comma is implicitly going to give a space between this argument of the print line statement and this argument here which is going to evaluate the two. This is very similar to what we saw down here where we had a string and then we had some other expression that we're evaluating here which is the time.now function. So let's just go ahead and print that out to the screen. So we see that one plus one is equal to two and then again we have the time date stamp. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out. Okay, so a few more things. I also want to mention that you can print line and you can get the output to be a float, not an integer. So these expressions here, we're evaluating to an integer because one plus one is equal to two, but we can have something like this where we get one, let's say 1.01 .01 minus 0 0.99. And if we run that, what we see is we see a floating point number here, 0 0.02. We're gonna get rid of that. And then another thing we can also consider are booleans. So we can print out booleans to the screen. So for instance, print line true. So again, this should look somewhat familiar to you if you're coming from Python. Um, one difference, I guess, in Python is that this, this is generally uppercase T for true and uppercase F for false. But in C, C++, and in Go, the lowercase convention is going to be maintained here. So if we go ahead and print that out, that's going to evaluate to true. And we can actually evaluate Boolean expressions and get an output of true or false. So for instance, we can say format.println, and we can ask whether or not five is equal to five. So this is going to evaluate to true because five is definitely equal to five. Whereas if we had this expression down here, and we replace five with six, this one should evaluate the false because five is not equal to six. Let's just go ahead and ensure that we get true. So we get true for the initial one that we printed out, true for the one that's asking if five is equal to five, and then false for the one that's asking if five is equal to six. So that pretty much does it for this video on values. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below in the comment section. As always, the code will be provided on my GitHub page, and you can find a link to that in the description below in this video. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.